Welcome to the infected Donna Troy, right here at Comic Story, and your home for audio dramas of your favorite comic books, video games, and movies. Currently in the DC Universe, we have a villain known as the Batman Who Laughs, an evil Batman merged with the Joker from another dimension. He is currently going through the DC Universe, infecting various individuals to create his own infected Justice League. That story is being told in Batman Superman, and I will link that down below. The individuals that have been infected are Supergirl, Donna Troy, Blue Beetle, Shazam, Commissioner Gordon, and Hawkman. And we have these individual storylines telling you a little bit about when these individuals became infected with the Joker toxin. Today's story is Donna Troy and what happened when she became infected with the Joker toxin. The Titans have recently hit a bad road. Dick Grayson was shot in the head and left the team, and now they're going from bad to worse as the team finds themselves in the town of Serenity Point, Alaska, in the middle of an all-out brawl. Not only are two communities fighting each other, but the Titans are now only down to four members because Donna Troy left the week prior. And while everyone tries to figure out what to do next, Raven begins to feel something pulling her away from the fight. It felt like Donna, but was it really? Raven flies into the abandoned house as she calls out for Donna Troy, but something attacks her from behind. However, to understand the situation in full, we must look back three weeks prior. Without Nightwing, Donna Troy has been leading the Titans to the best of her ability. They came to Serenity Point on orders by the Justice League to mediate a town full of metahumans who were at each other's throats. A woman named Borna created a neighborhood watch to offer structure and discipline to the members and look out for metahumans in the town who are abusing people with their powers. The man named Remy argues that there have been concerns about the neighborhood watch and they feel as though they have become the self-appointed organization that is policing this town. But as talks between the two groups heat up, Donna tells them both that they're getting nowhere and she will pick it up again on the following day, which just led to more fighting between the groups. Now in our current time, Miss Martian senses that something is wrong as she tries to reach out to Raven but gets nothing back. Her investigation brings her to a room where she sees Raven tied up, telling the rest of the team to be on their guard. Steel says that she's on her way to the hospital, should she reroute instead, but Miss Martian tells her no. They're already stretched thin, just stick to the current objectives. Miss Martian begins to get closer to Raven, but as she does, someone in the shadows flicks on a lighter and ignites the cloth to a Molotov bomb. Moments later, as the fire rages through the room, the shadowy figure tells herself, Two down, two to go. Just as Miss Martian is knocked out, her psychic link between everyone is severed, leaving Steel and Beast Boy alone. And one week ago in the hospital, Donna was watching over the people hurt in the conflict when she suddenly heard a scratchy and twisted voice call out to her. She was already fighting the urge to just punch things when that voice tells her, Heavy is the head that wears the tiara. Donna runs out asking, Who's there? And the Batman who laughs says, I was wondering that myself. Which roles are you playing today? Dick, Diana, Troya? Donna sees a trail of blood and begins to follow it as the Batman who laughs continues. He tells her that he's quite interested to see what she's got lurking backstage. Well, more accurately, what you don't. She kicks in the door to the next room, seeing a broken mirror with her reflection, and the Batman who laughs tells her, Major, look! Just then a small wire is cut and a VCR under the mirror shoots out a thin piece of metal that hits Donna in her side. She yells at him that this is unbelievably a bad time for her, and if he really wants to see her, he should just come out to take a closer look. So he says that he's sure he'll see the real her. See ya soon! Back in our current time, Steel walks into the security room where the Batman who laughs is watching over Donna, and he sees someone on the feed. She looks closely and notices someone in the room above her, and that someone looks like Donna. Donna turns the dial for the MRI to max and it begins to rip away Steel's suit. A few seconds later, Donna takes Steel's body telling her that there's only one left, an animal easily trapped. Later across the city, Beast Boy begins to pick up everyone's scent gathered in one place. He tells himself that it's most likely a trap, but he just can't leave them. He rushes over to see Steel locked in a tube and Miss Martian surrounded by fire and Raven on the ground struggling to free herself. He pulls the tape off of Raven's mouth asking, who did this to you? And Raven shouts that it's Donna. Donna tells Raven that Donna Troy is dead. 
They want to see how it all began? Well, it was six days ago. The old Donna knew that she couldn't use force to create a truce between two groups. So feeling unfit to lead, she did the only thing that she could think of. She submitted. She passed the reins on to someone who actually wanted them. A terrible idea, generally speaking, but it's not her fault. Remy was killed and Donna blamed herself, but you can't blame a tool for being used. She felt that the only responsible thing to do was to just let go of the situation entirely. She had only known a life of service, duty, and performing tasks laid out before her, and without those burdens, she was nothing, and nothing ever felt so free. The Batman Who Laughs infected her with this dark toxin, but it didn't kill her. No, it unlocked the truth within. And for her entire existence, Donna Troy lived with conflicting identities, conflicting purposes. She turned on all of her false selves in an ego massacre with no survivors except for the one before them now. If they hadn't interfered here, Remy and Borna would still be alive. If not, at least it would have been the death of those that they chose. Those arrested were set free while the Titans were busy being captured. The outcome of the residents was vile. Or at least that's what they wanted. Raven begins to get up telling her that she knows then that they won't be going down without a fight. Steel, Miss Martian, and Beast Boy all break from their restraints, but as Beast Boy lunges forward, Donna effortlessly dodges, asking, Why do you keep fighting? Steel throws her hammer, but Donna catches it, throwing it at Miss Martian, asking, Is this really what you wanted out of our lives? That's just so sad. All of this is beneath you now. They're all ghosts of someone else's past. Raven gets back up, telling him, wait, don't rewrite their stories. Whoever she is now, whoever she's become, she is a part of them. She's still that person. She is still their friend. She can't deny it. Whatever she is going through, they will all get through it. Just tell them what to do. Donna begins to fly away, telling them, if you want to know what to do, you can fight for me. And that is is the story of how Donna became the infected and battled against the Titans, the infected of the Titans. Now, like I said, there are currently, at the time of recording this, five episodes of the Batman-Superman, Batman Who Laughs battle, along with the storyline of the King Shazam, where he became infected and what happened with him. If you want to know more, subscribe to our channel and smash that like button. The only way to avoid a Joker infection in yourself is to smash that like button. And you will see on a weekly or every other week basis the next chapter of this story, the next infected person, or the next storyline of them trying to fight the infected people. But either way, I hope you enjoy, and I will see you next time.